Professor Gray said that we should use some guided exercises to give students practice with grammar form. This, to me, sounds like explicit grammar teaching. She also said that we should provide tasks requiring students to express themselves so that they will have to use the grammatical forms to express the meanings and functions that are their own ideas. To me, this sounds like the use of implicit knowledge. She also said that we should provide examples of grammar that demonstrate real language use. Here's an example of the kind of activities that Professor Gray means by guided practice. These are some examples of how students might practice with the present perfect progressive. If they're given sentences like the ones below, they can be asked to simply fill in the blank using the present perfect progressive. So for the first one, the student could fill in the student's blank in line for three hours to buy tickets, but still don't have them. Students need to think about the verb that would fit in that sentence. So what do you do in line? Well, you wait. The students wait in line. No, perfect progressive. The students have been waiting in line for three hours to buy tickets. The second one, it something thing all day, so the rivers are very high. Well, what makes the rivers high? Well, it's rain, of course. Water makes the river high. It rains all day, so the rivers are high. No. Present perfect progressive. It has been raining all day, so the rivers are very high. Third, this is obviously an issue that you something on for some time. This is obviously an issue. What do you do with an issue? issue? Something on, the verb that works with on, work. This is obviously an issue that you work on for some time. No, present perfect progressive. This is obviously an issue that you have been working on for some time. So these are the types of practice activities that Bethany refers to by guided practice. And this is the completed set of sentences. An example of much less structured or guided practice comes from one of the games that you can find on the American English website. This game is called The Longest Sentence. Students work with little bricks that have words on them, and the students can build sentences using those word bricks. So what about explicit teaching of grammar? Professor Gray says yes, but students also need practice in creating meanings without structure. So she suggests using both exercises that require explicit grammar knowledge as well as those that require the use of implicit knowledge. She also points out that students need to see grammar in discourse. Lots of examples are needed. Students also need to have opportunities to use the grammar for real communication. With this advice in mind, how can technology help? Well, to start, teachers can get ideas for how to make grammar practice fun. Also, the internet is full of real examples of language use. Teachers can find examples to illustrate grammar that they want students to use. Teachers can also use a corpus to find examples, and then they can also use controlled corpus activities to let students write their own grammar rules for English. On the American English website, there are lots of interesting games that students can play to help them learn and practice with grammar. The American English Facebook page also has a lot of grammar, lots of different topics of English grammar where students can do explicit learning and you can use it for explicit teaching of grammar.